So what's going on? This is Langston 2092. And um, it's been a while since my man, you know, has done a video, probably like a, what, a year? Yeah, so for those that don't know who he is, this is Pretty Ricky. This is the guy that I always talk about. So um, what are we going to talk about? You know what? Okay, well, I guess we... And then some. So <laughs> we're going to start off by talking about the corporate world because he's in the corporate world and I and he's been drinking a little something, something. But um, I don't know too much about the corporate world. He's in it, so he can really basically tell you what it's like to be a African American slash Puerto Rican <laughs> in the corporate world. Minority in the corporate. A minority in the corporate world. It's. it's Let's talk about the benefits first. Let's talk about the pros. Let's get that Oops. out of the way, and then we'll talk about the cons. Cause there's some people that's actually, you know, looking at these videos that's in the corporate world as well. The pros are, you can make a good living, right? You'll have decent medical benefits. You will be able to put money aside for retirement, which I'm a long, long way from that, right? Um, you'll be able to buy material things. You can build your brand, which is what I'm doing right now, right? Build your brand in the corporate world where other people in that world will see your brand and say, hey, I want to pay that guy a lot of money to come do whatever he's doing for them, for me. Those are the pros. Money, material stuff. So, no. no. So, here's the thing about women, right? What's the saying? Uh, you'll never lose women chasing money, but you'll lose money chasing women. It doesn't matter if you do that through the corporate world, if you're an infamous, famous, monetized YouTuber, a drug dealer, a, a, an athlete, if your goal is to attract women, it doesn't matter if you do it in the corporate world. So I don't think, I don't think corporate America brings you any better women. It brings you white women. <laughs> so I said we're gonna talk about what we talked about a year ago. I, I guess so. I believe I mentioned white women a year ago. Um, I'm still a fan. Um, it'll bring you. Women, I'll tell you what it I'll tell you what it does give you. You'll find that you can't talk to everybody about what you go through in corporate America. So it'll give you people that are like you that you can have conversations with. I think I think this would be a, a good question to ask you. Why do you think why do you think um that someone that's in excuse me why do you think in your field that there are not a lot of black people, you know, like going towards that career That's or your field rather? That's I don't know. Why don't y'all tell me how come there's no African-Americans in technology? Put it in the comments. I promise. I'm, I, I check his videos out all the time. I don't always comment, but I always like his videos and I check them out, right? And every now and then, like I'll comment and someone will, who's been a fan for a long time will be like, what up, Pretty Ricky? And I'll shout them out or, you know, acknowledge the fact that they acknowledge me, whatever. Um, that's a good question. Why don't y'all tell me? Why are no black people in technology? You can make hundred thousand dollars with something as simple as a certification and an associate's degree why are y'all not here how come every time i'm on a zoom call every time i go to a work event y'all not there never not once you tell me why you give me you tell me why you know what's so funny man it is uh, i hate i hate like living this deja vu I think we had the same conversation last year, and we. I think that this part we didn't. Um, some odd reason it didn't record or something, and I didn't put it up. 
I, I mean, honestly, I, I mean, <sighs> people in your field many of us are not being pushed in the black community they're not the ones that that they that the black community sees on tv getting the girls driving the fancy cars and living in the plush houses and stuff like that when you look at the black community the only um persons that's in the black community that's actually driving the fancy cars and you know, living in these lavish houses. I got a fancy car. Yeah, he I has a fancy car. car with this. Yeah. It's like. Well, let me let me let me finish real quick and then. No, you finish. You're saying like we don't. Have, you're saying we don't fit the mold, right? We don't. Well, it's not. We're not flashy enough that our it's, people. It's see not us. not. Not only are you all not flashy enough, but. Man, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. White media does not push that on television they don't and and i'm not only just white people uh, white media excuse me overall it's our race included you know we got bet but that's owned by white people though but yeah, I, I mean I it's no i haven't either it's not it's like it's like going to high school and you're you're the nerd and the rappers and the basketball players are the cool kids and that's what the kids follow you know that's just my opinion you know i may be a hundred percent wrong no you you actually made a good video um a few weeks ago about nerds running the world right all the nerd all the people that you're asking for jobs and stimulus checks and how can we not get in that child tax credit the people who are making the decisions to say yay or nay were nerds. You you picked on them. You teased them. You bullied them, and that inspired them to achieve. Right? Hardship, struggle. It inspired them to achieve, and they have. And now you guys are going to them saying, "Hey, what about that COVID something or other? Can we get a stimulus check or something like that?" I get what you're saying that. People like myself. What's the dude's name? That's real cool dude. He follows your channel. He does the real estate. Uh, sir, oh, something. sir Ashley. Cool actually, dude. His, his name is He's a cool dude, sir right? I, I actually watch his channel because you know I've been, and you too have been kind of thinking about real estate. And uh, I'm thinking more along the lines of rental property for additional income. I'm really starting to see. I thought I made a lot of money. Apparently I don't. I need to make more. So rental property might be a, a way for both of us. We, yeah. We'll talk about that later. But um, like dudes like him, dudes like you, dudes like me, we're not put in front of everyone. Like, hey, these are cool guys, be like them. I get what you're saying, but you know for a fact, I have constantly, I go on all the few social media things that I have. And I'm like, yo, you guys need to, get certified in network security and you need to know what SD-WAN is and I, I'm telling African Americans you need to know about technology there is people in my industry that make quarter of a million dollars a year and have nothing more than a high school diploma you can get in at a very low level and work your way up and make enough money to legitimately change your life and even your children's life, even members of your family's life. You can, I just hired someone. Unfortunately, he did not look like what you say, what you say people do. <laughs> he didn't look, he didn't look like that. Sorry, I had to drink. Uh, but he was the best possible candidate. And then I've been given the okay to maybe hire someone else. And I'm like, I would love to hire someone that I I don't know anyone. I don't you do you know anyone? No. I know a lot of rappers though. <laughs> a lot of local rappers. I mean if you hand out record deals, I know the shitload of people that <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I know a shitload of uh, 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 rappers, singers. 
and dances. And they got studio time and all four of the rooms don't match <laughs> Yeah, Not I mean, ah, man, I mean, I, I can't argue with them. You know, um, there's I, other ways to make a dollar. It is. Besides being a rapper or a basketball player or a football player. You're right. You know, and I, I, the way that I look at the black community is we're going to get left behind. I mean, we are left behind. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I was um, looking at, I forgot what it was online, man. And I'm pretty sure you could build on it, you know, a lot. You know, I'm just getting introduced into it. But we've been talking about this, but we haven't been saying a metaverse. But we've been using other terms outside of the metaverse. And we already knew that this was coming. Like, they had a movie called The Matrix. That's the metaverse. You know what I'm saying? And it's a kid right now that's making millions selling rental property on the metaverse. You have Nike that's really? in the metaverse. Wait, hold on. Really? Yes. Wow. Real estate. You have uh, uh, Nike. Virtual is real estate? Virtual uh, real estate. No lie. And I've been talking about the metaverse. I've been talking about transhumanism, singularity, uh, excuse me, the singularity, technological singularity, transhumanism, and everything. And we've been we've been discussing this, you know, Boeing, DARPA, for, for, yeah, 2002. You know, and it's just going on deaf ears. I don't know what is it, because you're too light skinned and and I'm I'm a shade darker than you and my nose is bigger, or we not, too short, or... Not in this camera, we look kind of about the same. I guess so. Uh, but what is it? Uh, you know? That's probably it. So, our people won't accept information unless it comes from someone else. They won't accept information from you and me. That's not good enough. We have to have a cosign. Mm. So here, funny enough, I'm sitting in my house... We are in my house right now. Um, I'm watching uh, Power, whatever, book 97, Tommy's Power, right? And in the show Power, um, Tommy ends up having a half black brother that he never knew about. He just find, he finds out about him when he goes to Chicago. And uh, I was with someone and I was like, that's corny. Like, why did he need a cosign? Most Minorities who watch Power will co-sign for Tommy. Tommy didn't need a co-sign. Most people actually like Tommy more than they like Ghost, right? It's kind of like Stephen A. Smith and uh, uh, what's homeboy's name? Max. Max Kellerman. Most minorities like Max Kellerman more than they like Stephen A. Smith, right? Mm -hmm. We won't listen to me and you unless... There's someone sitting in the middle of us that kind of looks like, you know, the CEO of Meta. Is that what it's called now? Meta. Well, uh, Disney has Metaverse, Facebook. There's two other, two other. Um... Disney took over Warner Brothers. Hopefully they do something good with that. But anyway, as far as that goes, the technology stuff, all I have to say is, did you watch the Super Bowl? Because I did. You know what I saw? I saw a Boston Dynamics commercial where Spot and Jumpman and all of them were just kind of doing like cool stuff. So once they make that commercial, Bill Gates is probably right. Bill Gates, and I'm sure everyone in your comment section, because that's what they do, uh, will correct me. Cause I'm, you're wrong, and you know, <laughs> he said it would be a different year, whatever. Um, I believe Bill Gates said every household will have some sort of yeah. robotic technology by 2025. Is that still far fetched? You tell Ray, me. Is that still far fetched? No. And then Ray, if I'm pronouncing his his, his name right, Ray Kurtz Kurtzwell, okay. Kurtzwell, he said that by 2025, by 2025. and 2045 will be when robots will take over so Te technological singularity the, right will symbiotically that'll be the point where we infuse ai with humans and then nobody actually knows 
what happens from that point. How could you? How could you know if you're a artificial intelligence that's superior to human beings, right? And your goal, because an artificial intelligence, all of it is being developed by, look this up, uh, Ben Gertzel is kind of like the father of AI. He's the one in, I believe he's in China, building the brain for AI. And they're trying to figure out how to program consciousness in a computer program, right? Ben Gertzel, it's like Ben G-O-E-T-Z-E-L is his last name. Most people will call him like the founding father of AI. He's very much involved with the development of Sophia. If you don't know who Sophia is, look it up. She's the the android that has the human face that they put the human face on so that human beings will be more comfortable interacting with this artificial intelligence. Again, look it up. He is developing an AI trying to figure out how to merge uh, human consciousness with artificial intelligence, right? If you and it's also being funded by multiple different defense departments. So the Chinese defense is responsible for most of the funding for this. So it's military based, right? If this AI is based on military kind of outlooks, it's gonna look at human beings and say, well, you guys are useless and you're kind of like affecting the planet and it turns into the matrix, right? Or at least Terminator, at the very least. You know, we're gonna freak some people out. Um, I, they gonna watch yeah, I mean, you know, we we gonna make it a little lighter, you know, because I understand that you all don't like this type of stuff, which bugs me out. Y'all don't want to know anything about what's gonna happen in the future. But I think what they they believe is if they vote Democrat, <laughs> the Democrats are gonna get us out of this. So. I posted something on one of the social medias and it said, let's go, Brandon. If you need me to tell you what that is, then you shouldn't be a fan of mine. You shouldn't be commenting towards me. You should know where I stand on that. You know, when I said, let's go, Brandon, right? And why I said it was, I went to Walmart, I bought some stuff, just stuff I needed around the house. And on the way home, I stopped to get gas. So I drive a luxury car. If you drive a luxury car, by the way, for all you oh, want to drive a luxury car, you have to put premium gas in a luxury car. You can't put 87 octane in a luxury car. All right. So I go to Walmart and I believe my total bill was I'd like to be accurate. You know? Let's see. Let's be accurate. My total bill was. $134.61. Look at what I purchased. Do you see $134.61? No. And then then I stopped to get gas for my luxury car at 409 dollars cents to fill my tank up, which cost me 40 something dollars. I don't remember paying that when Trump was in office. Exactly. I believe $134 in Walmart when Trump was in office would have got me at least six bags worth of stuff instead of the three you see in that picture. You folks feel like you are obligated and you owe Democrats your votes. And you don't take the time to see the policies. And this is the next. We got to go. We got to go here. And it's got to be all you. All right. You don't take the time to see what exactly is the policies and how these actual policies affect me. For example, I know a woman. I won't say who that woman is, but you know who you are. She told me, oh, could you loan me some money because I'm only getting two grand back in taxes. You know why you're only getting two grand? Because you took all that money and they told you ahead of time, if you take this money, we will get it back and recoup that money when we pay you back your taxes, right? 
So now that money that you literally, you live your life based on tax season, you're not getting it, right? And everybody was counting that money. Too. And you were counting for that. You needed that. That money was buying you your new used car. That money was paying up that light bill that's three months credit behind. Cards. That credit card, that phone bill, all those things that you struggle with. You needed that tax money. and You're only getting half, if not less, right? Remember who's in power when that happened. You don't owe anyone your vote. Research, learn the policies, and then cast your vote. That vote might be red, it could be blue. You have to vote for who has your best interest. Now we gotta talk about, you gotta talk about what just happened to you this week. You gotta. Um, because it's part of what I just said. Yeah, and then, and then it has something to do with the Democrats and, you know. Got a whole lot to do with that. Um, so, for those that don't know, um, I was actually um, carrying around my firearm and practicing open and carry. You know, where I, you know, put it on the side of my hip, you know. And I was waiting for a year, a year in order to get my CCW, you know, and the CCW will will allow me to actually carry a weapon concealed where you can't see it, you know, and um, I went through the whole process. Matter of fact, let me take it back a little bit. Pretty Ricky is the one that put me on to, you know, the classes and what I had to go through in order to attain it. So this was sometime around last year, you know, where, you know, I had to go to uh, a class. What was his name? I forgot his name, Joe. This was in Gastonia, right? Gastonia, the class was, and I think I did a, a video on it already. The class was about $65. I think I had a group Groupon to go with it. And um, I took the class. It was a field test and then it was a written test, you know, easy. Just a regular 22. 22. Yeah. Um, and I passed the test. Anybody could pass the test. It was women, you know, black women. You they shot a gun before you could pass the test. Yeah, you know, so I passed the test. And then after that, I had to do do a fingerprint. And I had to set up an appointment for that at the sheriff's department. And did he tell and, you, go home, take this number? Yeah, take the number and, and go through all of the process of going online and the application and, and putting up. I think it was $100, right? Was it? Yeah. Not, yeah, about a hundred dollars. So it was February when I took the test. Around this time, I took the test, the field test. I passed that then to go to the sheriff's department. That was in August. So I get to the sheriff's department in August, get fingerprinted, give them all my information and everything so they could prove that I'm not crazy. Sign my paper and all of that stuff. And then they told me around six months or something six like that. Months. I'm just now getting my CCW this week. Like, well, matter of fact, let me be factual. This was past Thursday. I ha I got an email, got email. Yeah. stating yeah. that your CCW is in the mail. So I don't have the physical CCW, my, my license. Yeah, that was Thursday. So I should get it about Thursday of, of, of this week coming up, Thursday, Friday. You know, so... That's just how long it took a year. Now, will it? Do you think it'll take that long for them, if they were to? It took you that long because what happened is, what do I always say? You, you're your own first responder, right? Cops are not there to stop whatever is happening to you. They're there to investigate what already happened, right? They're gonna come five minutes later. You know what can happen in five minutes? You know the amount of damage that could be done within five minutes? I went to the range today and shot off 200 rounds in 10 minutes, and I was taking my time and adjusting and stuff like that, right? You know what I could do in five minutes with one of those things I got? They're not there to stop what's happening. They're there to investigate what already happened to you, which I was preaching to him. Hey, 
you got a family. Like, it was different for me. It was me, right? But you, you got children and you got your kid's mom. And you got yourself. And you live in the house by yourself out there where you live, right? I'm not saying where you live because that's a whole yeah. other topic. By the way, I know you. I just want to say, <laughs> I just want to say, <laughs> between him and me, there's about 20 yeah. guns. And I'm not talking about no, no little stuff. I'm talking about not that pew pew. I'm talking about pow pow, right? I just want to say that, and it don't take nothing but a text message. If this brother ever text messaged me and said, come to my house, and it's on, I'm coming to his house, and it's on. And you're not going to see me coming. So... <laughs> if you know, you know. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Do you want to show off your new toy? That's an empty firearm. YouTube, keep this monetized. The only thing that's added to it is the Hollow Sun 507K. All right, that is a Sean the Ported barrel. Tip, tip, tilted this way. See the lightning cuts? That keeps it from being snappy, right? Obviously, you see the trigger safety. You see the, turn it this way. You see that beveled magwell so I can get magazines in and out that bad boy quickly. Make sure my serial number is not showing on that. Yeah, you're good. That's 21 of them hollows. Well, 20 plus one. That was not a brag. That was a... And let them know what type of gun it is. A firearm. So that's a Canik Mete SFX. That's the newest, latest, greatest bad boy. All right? That's a competition gun. So if you shoot competition, that's the kind of gun you're going to shoot. That's not really something you're carrying around because it's uh, a 5.2 inch barrel. That's a big old Glock. Let them know how light it is, too. Super light. I mean, you picked it up. Super light. Mm -hmm. Suppressor height sights. We're not flagging anyone. We're good. You can't see that red dot, but moral of the story is that's not a brag. That was a uh, just understand when you say certain things to certain people, make sure you know what you're talking about because you don't know who people know. And people might be able to call someone who is completely out of their mind and been waiting for that time to get... Got a whole house full of these things. <laughs> I've been waiting to get busy. I've been, <laughs> I've been calling people like, can you do something so I can get busy? <laughs> oh, man. So, um, being that we on firearms, you know, um, let's talk about New York. So, I was living in... New York City, kind of like Crown Heights, Brownsville, right? And I moved to Connecticut. When I was living in New York City, because like everybody else, I had an illegal firearm. I had a USP, I had a H and K USP, 40 cal. Google is your friend. That's a serious military style weapon, right? When I moved to Connecticut, I wasn't able to bring it with me. So I left it in New York. Wasn't able to bring it with me, not because of laws, because where I was going, it was like, hey, that's, you can't have that. Neither here or there. Either way, every gun that I owned in the Northeast was illegal. I've never owned a legal firearm in New York. And the very first time the age of my first firearm was 12 or 13. I got a silver with a brown handle, 25. It was the first time I owned a gun when I was about 12 or 13 years old, right? So I've owned a firearm most of my life. 
never legally, never went to a gun store and purchased a firearm ever until I moved to Charlotte. When I got here, I started doing research, right? Because I was seeing all this stuff on the news about firearm purchases are pretty high. And then especially when COVID started, it was like firearm purchases are out of just out, out of this galaxy. And I was like, all these people can purchase firearms legally? I usually had to go into some back room with some Jamaican <laughs> dude smoking weed with his partner over there like this with his gun in his hand and I had to buy it that way. What is all these people doing that they could just walk into gun stores? So I started researching, how can you purchase a gun in North Carolina? And lo and behold, turns out North Carolina doesn't infringe on your Second Amendment rights as much. They do, but not as much as other states. So I was like, all right, this is interesting. I'm over the age of 18. I have a valid driver's license. Are you telling me I could go buy a rifle? Went to Bass Pro Shop and uh, I was like, hey, listen, don't call the cops. I'm just asking the question. <laughs> Are you telling me I could buy that AR-15 right there? And he was like, yeah, you got a license? I was like, it's Connecticut. He was like, well, get it switched over to North Carolina and come back. That's it? Like, I don't got to do a song and dance for you or nothing? He's like, nope, you just need a valid North Carolina cotton, license. Man. I don't got to pick cotton. <laughs> what, what's uh, life? I don't got to be a homeboy that was watching the inmates. Uh, oh, yeah. Like you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I don't got to do that. I could just go to DMV. So I did that and went back. And he was like, yeah, buy your rifle. So I bought a rifle. I don't know nothing about rifles. I got this rifle. I'm like, well, I hope I don't shoot myself or someone else in my house. And then I was like, I right, a rifle is cool and all, but how can I get a pistol? And I did some research. And in North Carolina, here's where the infringement happens. All right. In North Carolina, you have to apply for what's called a purchase permit. You have to go to the sheriff and say, hey, I like to buy a pistol. I'm going to pay you five dollars to give me permission to buy a pistol. That's how it works. The sheriff says, all right, I'm going to do a background check to make sure, you know, you didn't beat your wife up back in 1998. And you didn't smoke crack and shoot like the crack dealer that sold it to you to get more in crack and then went home and beat your <laughs> wife. As long as you didn't do any of that stuff, they issue you a purchase permit. And you can order multiple purchase permits. Like you, how many did you order? I think I ordered like, like two, three, something like that. I ordered like three or four, right? And they're like what, five bucks yeah. or eight bucks? Something like that, right? Even those let them know that that takes time too. So you kind of So when I did it when I did it, it was when I first got here. COVID was on the news, but nobody knew what it was. So this is like February 2020. So I got mine instantly, right? Like within a few weeks. And then I was like, oh, so are you saying I could go buy a <laughs> nine millimeter yeah. handgun? Like, what is it? So I go to buy a gun. And uh, I don't remember the first pistol I purchased, but I remember going in and I was looking around. I had my hoodie on. Like, like I thought I was doing something illegal. And the dude in the gun shop was like, you got the purchase permit? You got a driver's license? You got money? Which gun do you want? I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Are you telling me you're going to give me a gun? And I'm going to leave? <laughs> Today? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. Matter of fact, buy some ammo. To Wait, hold on. Let me get this right. you going to give me a gun. <laughs> and I can leave today with yeah. the gun. With bullets for the gun. Today. <laughs> so the whole time I drove home 25 miles per hour with this gun in my trunk terrified because I'm not used to freedom was the moral 
I'm not used to the freedom of being able to exercise my right to carry a firearm because it's my right. Now, I did my, so I did more research like, all right, this is cool, I got this gun and all, but people go to Walmart and shoot people, right? Like the Texas thing happened, you know, I want to be able to defend myself in Walmart. How do I do that? So I did the research and it turns out you could take a test. It's eight hours. You got to take an eight hour class. And at the end of the eight hour class, you got to shoot. So of course I got this nine millimeter gun that I went home and drove 10 miles an hour all the way home like this. <laughs> I thought I saw a blue light. I turned the radio down. I turned the AC off. <laughs> I was like, if the AC off, they're going to pull me over. <laughs> you know, so I make it home and I now want to carry this gun everywhere I go. You take an eight hour class, you shoot at the end of the class. If you pass, it gives you a number. You go on to the website for the sheriff. You put it in, you schedule your fingerprint session. And then for me, it took like three months. 